very good uh, very good morning ladies and gentlemen uh, you are all be warmly welcome to the virtual film visit to the broadland hydropower project jointly organized by the civil engineering special committee and the board forum of the institution of engineers sri lanka the institution of engineers sri lanka is the apex national body for professional engineers in the country ladies and gentlemen this is the first ever virtual field visit to broadland power project i'm sure this will be an exciting event for all engineers with this covid 19 new normal lifestyle i can see many engineers now joining me to experience this journey it's time to welcome all of you formally to do the honors ladies and gentlemen may i now invite engineer professor ranjit disanayaka chairman civil engineering section of committee the institution of engineer sri lanka official welcome address professor disanayaka Over to you. Good morning, everybody. Manjula, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Now it's okay. It's okay. All technical walls are now okay. Again, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the first ever visual, virtual visit uh, by the Civil Engineering Sectional Committee and Water Forum of uh, Institute of Engineers, Sri Lanka. I really welcome all of the engineers joining from the various chapters and the main chapters, especially for the foreign chapters and engineers of ISL and the water forum i am pleased to tell you that the last year we had uh, several seven local visit and the three foreign visit unfortunately this year we had only three local visit so far due to this uh, covid 19 we could not organize uh, some of the arrange field visit during this year but thanks to the water forum and civil engineering sectional committee we were able to arrange the first ever uh, appeal visit via the zoom i here especially would like to thank chairman water forum uh, engineer dr laksiri kamal laksiri and his team and also he is the project director of this uh, particular project and his team and the engineer manjula samarsinga and engineer krishan patirana for all the support in order to organize this program i again welcome you to the join this uh, existing uh, programs with us in future also and here with i'm um, again uh, welcome you as i would like to tell you one more thing uh, in institute of engineers sri lanka is thinking of yeah. arrange the yeah. similar way the techno also yes. that will be another also. experience yeah. and the people are working very hardly this is lovely i would like to kasanga yalla ji manjul to continue the program thank you thank you very much engineer professor ranjit disanayaka chairman of the civil engineering section committee iesl okay ladies and gentlemen let's move on to the visit we have with us uh, project director of the broadland hydropower project engineer dr kamal laksuri engineer dr kamal laksuri has 28 years of experience in hydropower project uh, dam projects as the vice president of the institution of engineers sri lanka is a member of the strategic council international water association immediate past president association of consulting engineers sri lanka executive committee member fedic asia pacific group vice president sri lanka national committee on large dams of icol chairman sri lanka association of the institution of engineers uk and ladies and gentlemen he is the chairman of the water forum the institution of engineers sri lanka one special request please keep your mics muted ladies and gentlemen and uh, you can keep your image images also muted please uh, with this uh, may i invite uh, engineer dr kamal laksuri to proceed the today's virtual visit yeah good morning and thank you very much Mang manjula for the nice introduction mm -hmm. and professor anjit disanayaka for the uh, welcome uh, again good day to all of you we have members joining from uh, all parts of the world today it's a very special today uh, this is the first time we have an event with members participating from the center the, from the provinces and also from the international chapters um, so that if i mention about the today program now first we will have a, a brief introduction to the project now and then we will move to the site we'll visit the various uh, locations of the project 
and then last we'll have a q and a session i am sure you'll get lots of questions so we can discuss at the end of the program so let me now uh, give you a brief introduction to the project um, now this is a project uh, we, the power plant we are building in the kalani river it's a, uh, the plant will come at the tail end of the existing uh, Lakshapana complex, we call the Lakshapana complex, the, all the power stations in the Kalin River. And this is a run of the river type power plant. There are no lar large reservoirs involved and the main objective is uh, power generation. Uh, you can see the map there showing the Kalin basin. Uh, the initial studies were done in 1986 and then uh, we did a review study in, under JICA assistant in 2004. And this is a power plant identified in the uh, long-term generation expansion plan of CEB and but uh, got delayed due to uh, funding issues. And if I mention about the project location, the project headworks, that is the dam sites. We have two dams here in this project. So dam sites are located in the uh, town Ginigatiena in the Nuralia district. And then the tail end, that is the powerhouse complex that is uh, located near the town Kitulgala in uh, belongs to Kegol district. So the main, wor main work sites are basically about uh, 100 kilometers from Colombo. That is two and a half hours drive along A7 road. Now let's look, have a look on the uh, layout of the uh, project. Now here you can see the, this is the existing uh, Lakshapana complex. Uh, the Kalani River, and your right hand side is the main tributary Mausakale, Maskelioya, and then the left hand side we have the Kailgamoya, and then you can see all the uh, power plants built 40 50 years ago from Mausakale Reservoir down to uh, Polpitia. If you look at these two circles, now the red circle is the diversion we are, we are building under this project in the Kailgamoya, and then we have the main reservoir pond, main Broadlands Dam on the right hand uh, stretch. Uh, that is also we, there's the main dam we are building under this project. So what we do, the, we harness the remaining hydro potential downstream of the existing power plants, and then so we have two dams, and then a link tunnel, and then the main tunnel connecting the power uh, reservoir to the power plant down, and is connecting to the uh, re releasing the water back to the Kellen River. Then the we we'll look at the, the uh, if I mention about the main parameters, this is a 35 megawatt capacity power plant. So we have two 17.5 uh, turbine generator units installed at the powerhouse. And they, the plant can generate 126 gigawatt hours of green, clean energy annually. And to uh, generate that much of energy, we will consume, the plant consumes water at the rate of 70 cubic meters per second under a head of uh, 57 meters. So those are the basic parameters of the uh, project. Then if you look at the uh, financing, sorry, the yeah, the about the project execution, the, this is a national power plant under the Ceylon Electricity Board as the client and then we have the project consultants, the leading consultancy organization in the country, CECB, Central Engineering Consultancy Bureau. So this consultant is totally local and uh, for utilizing fully local expertise. The contractor is from China, that is China National Electric Engineering Company Limited, selected following uh, an international competitive bidding procedure. Then let's uh, look at the uh, financing of the project. Now, as we all know, the, this type of project, the biggest problem is securing funds. We cannot uh, secure funds totally from local sources, so we had to look for external assistance. And here, one, that's one reason the projects get delayed in securing funds. So in this project, uh, on, on the directives of the government, the cabinet decisions, we CEB as the borrower, we arrange funding directly uh, from uh, two banks, that is China, from China, International uh, Industrial and Commercial Bank of China. They are funding 85% of the project. Cost, that is about 69.7 million US dollars. Then the balance 15% from the, our local bank, Hatton National Bank, HNB, and through that, under bias credit loan agreements, we have we secured funds for the project. Again, I would like to uh, tell you uh, about the, the timeline, just uh, if I uh, uh, mention about the history, we started 
initial bidding in 2008, but unfortunately due to various reasons, mainly because of getting cabinet approvals in the, and also we spent a lot of time in loan processing, and then again in uh, the common problem, the releasing land. So with that, the way we, we could start the project only in 2013, end of 2013. So even after uh, commission, after commencing the work, so again we face uh, problems with social protest. As you all know, this area is uh, very popular for white water rafting. So the white water rafting is practiced in the same river stretch that we are harnessing under this project. So then there were uh, at the initial planning stage actually white water ra rafting was not that uh, popular or not at uh, such a higher scale, but with the project development, the white water rafting also improved very rapidly and then we had to give them a solution. So with that, we gave uh, the solution that we will release water for them through a mini hydropower plant built at the top of the dam so that they can practice for white water rafting in the, uh, during daytime. So with that, all these problems, we manage construction works and by now we have reached 70% of the works completed and we are scheduled to commission the power plant by the early next year this is January to, uh, 2021 so then uh, about the project scope if I mention this in a one single contract uh, lump sum contract covered under FIDIC design and build yellow book contract so we have the Broadlands main dam on the Muscalia and then we have the Kale Gamoya diversion with them and the, then the main water tunnel connecting the dam and the power plant in the link tunnel that is the uh, between the two reservoirs and the, the powerhouse complex uh, the powerhouse housing the turbine generate units and the other auxiliaries then we have a switch yard and the short transmission line connecting to the national grid and then the last we have the office and residential facilities for the operating staff all these works in one single contract um, we the, the uh, included in one single contract and then uh, if I just uh, show you all that in uh, the project layout, now here you can see the Calendar River, and then we have the main dam, the diversion dam, the diversion tunnel, the headrace tunnel, and uh, on the headrace tunnel we have the search tank, and at the end of the headrace tunnel we have the power plant, power station, and connecting back to the river. So all these structures, the whole project scope, uh, stretches over a five kilometer long river stretch along the Calendar River, as you can see there, and in this uh, interesting field visit today, we will take you to main uh, work sites. So, Manjula, yeah, yes. Now, if I mention about the uh, site visit today, so first we will take you to the main dam site, Broadlands main dam, as you can see there. Then from there, we will visit the diversion here, yeah, the diversion dam, and then we will take you to underground to see the how the tunnels are constructed and after the tunnel site finally we will take you to the powerhouse complex and with that we complete the uh, this field visit i am very sure you will find it interesting and uh, with this brief introduction i think we can now join manjula we can start the uh, yeah, field yeah. visit we can start with the field video. If you have any question, please uh, type into this, this chat box. We have our expert to uh, uh, give answers at the end of this uh, session. So uh, here we go with the uh, field visit. We'll join. Good morning, welcome to the Broadwell Hydro Project. Before getting into the detail of the field visit, we will have a brief idea about where this project locates and uh, history of this project. Uh, actually, this is uh, the 
probably the last large scale hydro power development in Cannon River Basin, uh, 35 megawatt installed capacity uh, powerhouse. Uh, this Kalani River actually starts just after our main dam site. This is Maskelio here. Another river is coming from the other side of the mountain. Uh, these two rivers merge and uh, Kalani River begins. Uh, before around 20 meters upward the confluence our main dam site is uh, located. So in addition I will briefly explain about the uh, Laksapana complex. This river starts from the uh, greeny uh, Samanala uh, mountain ranges and before our powerhouse there are three powerhouses in this Muscadia branch. Uh, first, first one is Mount Sakali Reservoir, then it comes to the canyon pond, then to the Laksapana pond. From Laksapana pond, we harness the power to this, uh, harness power from this uh, Colpitia existing powerhouse. Uh, after that, just after that, we uh, construct our main dam. This is Mas uh, Maskelia you are looking at now. Uh, when after cooling this uh, dam, there is a certain inundation in the Colpitia uh, tail race, so there is a strengthening work also going on uh, there, you can see. Our project consists ma major two sites. This is main dam site. Other one is around four kilometers downstream of the river. It is powerhouse site. Uh, I, our engineers will later explain each uh, major component of this project uh, at that location. Until that, I will especially mention one uh, component uh, due to this uh, dam and uh, we divert the water to powerhouse from main intake you may have heard that water rafting is carried out in this river this stretch so certain length of that water rafting uh, area is affected by our project so uh, we have decided to there was a, a diversion tunnel to construct the dam. Normally what we do is after constructing the dam, uh, diversion tunnel is plugged and uh, complete the project. But uh, in order to provide the water to that rafting, we have specially uh, constructed intake here uh, and uh, decided to give certain amount of water during the daytime to rafting uh, people. Uh, that's my brief introduction. Uh, we will go to the uh, each major component of the project and uh, they will give, our engineers will give more idea. First, uh, Mr. Vanikadeva, our senior dam engineer will explain you uh, about the uh, dam. Good morning. Uh, my name is Supari Vanikadeva. I am working here as the senior engineer for the main dam as well as the diversion we yeah. yeah. So we are at the viewpoint now. So I am going to explain you the components and some features of the main properties of the main dam. So this dam is a concrete gravity dam. Okay. This is yeah. being built across the uh, Muscalio, which is the main tributary of the Kalniganga. So this dam is located about 200 meters downstream of the famous Olpitia power station and 600 meters upstream of the controls with the Tehilgamoya, which is also a main tributary of the Tehilgam. So, this is the main dam. Dam is 96 meters long and 26 meters high from the foundation to the top of the operating bridge level so make a sound that after filling this dam minimum operating level is 111 111 meters above sea level there is a only 10 meter gap to operate the reservoir the reservoir 
catchment area here is 201 square kilometers and reserve capacity volume is 0.2 million of cubic here you can see the main dam is being separated for six blocks this is for the business of the construction as well as to maintain the quality these all blocks are separated with the construction uh, expansion joints with uh, water bars uh, to avoid any seepage to the joint so you can see the, uh, the openings there down there this is for the steel lift there are two gates to be installed later on at the moment it's not being installed the gates only some components of the gates are installed so you can see some block one block actually block number five it is a to be constructed uh, only that part is to be constructed now uh, concrete volume is about, about 600 meter cube so 98 percent of the concrete already been completed in this dam so now we better to go down and see the uh, components one by one then we can have get a more uh, good picture there so please follow me you can come with me down there now we are at the main dam top here the left abutment so these are the mass concrete blocks here block number one then the, here is the cable duct you can see the cable duct here it's a parapetal This is a one of the joint here. This joint is expansion joint. To separate each block, you have provided the expansion joint with the required water bars there to avoid any seepage through the joint. Here is the stop block storage pit now the stop blocks being sto stored here this stop blocks are used during the maintenance work to repair the um, tent gates or radial gates uh, we have to use this may the st stop blocks when the reserve is full of water be careful follow me here is the gantry crane this crane is there to handle the stop loss during the uh, maintenance of gates so it's possible to bring this stop loss by train and put it there and the shops they are upstream and do the necessary repairs for the, the radial gates when the reservoir is full be careful please follow me you can go here a bit here is one of the spillway source there this here is 330 meters long and 
down there. Now that's 40 meter total, 70 meter long, this spillway. So, you can see some items there. These are used to uh, use as a fixed pulleys to operate the gates with the cables during the painter gate uh, opening and closing. So, we can see another item there. This is a hoist machine in the yeah, this is to operate the gate system here. Uh, we have two gates. Two hoists for each gate. Cable duct is still running there to the other end. Be careful, you can be careful. You can see the, the remaining block there. This is the only block we have to do the concreting. Here this is the block 5. Now we have to complete only this block. Uh, another Three lift to go there to complete the the work there. Six hundred meter cubes of concrete to be poured for this uh, block number five to complete the work there. Then no no more concreting, all concreting. Now ninety eight percent is over. The two percent remaining here only. So we can complete this one by the end of the month probably. Once later on, uh, we have to protect these slopes there, the, the left but left bank slope and right bank slope upstream as well as downstream. Now you can see another few structures there on the upstream side of the dam. This small tunnel here is a transfer tunnel, not otherwise diversion tunnel, which is diverting the water from the Kehilga Moya to the, this upstream of the dam to get collected from that uh, uh, also. So, other one is to the left there uh, is a diversion tunnel earlier used to for the construction works. Now it is going to convert to the mini hydro power plant. So required intake structures and the cranes all, all already installed there. The gates already already installed there. So to the right there we can see the main intake here. This is the intake for the main tunnel. So that's all. The, you can see the, the one bridge there, that is the Polpitya Bridge, famous bridge, uh, the arch bridge, designed in 1970s. And further away you can see the switch chart of the Polpitya power station. Now we arrive to the main intake top there. So we can have a good view here for the dam.
you can see here the main dam now clearly than before uh, two gravity blocks are there then two spillway blocks and another two gravity blocks are there so we have three openings of spillway so now we can have nice view here from the top there The outlet of the Kehirgam also can see here, uh, better view here, very close view. So, intake, I mean, the tunnel also you can see here, it's also developed as an intake for the new hydropower. The gates are That is the quality here, which is famous. Uh, I'm Anand, senior site engineer for the main dam and the rear site. Uh, in this virtual site tour to the Broadlands Hydropower project, Navu is about to have another site visit of a major component of that project, which is called uh, Diversion Weir. Um, before the site visit, let me uh, say something about location and the purpose of having this structure. Uh, if I say something about location, uh, as you heard earlier, the Kalni River has two major tributaries, namely uh, Maskelioya and Kehelgamoya. This is Kehelgamoya. Uh, our main dam is uh, positioned on uh, Maskelioya and uh, the weir structure has put up in the Kehelgamoya. Mm. This uh, structure put up uh, about 8 meters, uh, 800 meters from the confluence of those two streams uh, towards the upstream uh, and uh, the water contributed from a very large area, the catchment area is about uh, 176 kilo, uh, square kilometers uh, and uh, I could say this is the third point along this stream. Uh, if you check, you will find out that uh, at the very beginning, you will see the castle Reef Pond, then the Norton Pond. Uh, in the third place, you will find you will find this pond. Uh, uh, let us go and see uh, the component of the structures. Uh, this is the guide wall in the left abutment. We are now at the left abutment. Uh, and another uh, guide wall to be casted in the right abutment. It is not yet done. Uh, and as you can see, uh, the curved face uh, structure is the spillway. Uh, then the slant sills arrangement uh, uh, closer to left abutment. Then the intake structure over there. I will show you on the way. Uh, this structure is about uh, 7,500 meter cubes of concrete and, uh, and uh, 1,500 yet to be done with the spillway and the right abutment guide wall. Um, this weir will uh, block the water path here and collect some water uh, over this area. Then part of the water will uh, directed to uh, directed through this tunnel, uh, which is uh, long about 800 meters uh, to main dam, and then the rest of uh, excess water will freely flow, flow over that. Uh, a spillway and this is has a uh, um, and this is has a eco flow arrangement uh, to avoid the dryness in the downstream due to this uh, construction uh, I don't think you can see it from here I will uh, take you another time
this is the trash truck of uh, uh, trash truck put up in front of the entrance of the tunnel. Uh, this will collect all the trashes and uh, avoid getting inside uh, there. Uh, as you can see, this is the gate of the Slansos arrangement. Uh, this is here for the flushing sediments collected uh, behind the weir. This opening uh, starts from very bottom, uh, if I say uh, elevation, 118.5, uh, which is uh, 6 meters below the weir crest. So once it, once this gate opened, uh, the sediments can be flushed through this facility. The crest, crest elevation is 124.5. Uh, When it is uh, the pond, when the pond is uh, at full level, uh, this tunnel will carry two meter height of water path, uh, which is uh, having a flow rate of twenty meter cubes per second, uh, and it will have a mile slope about 0.4 percent. Uh, uh, this is starting from uh, 122.5 and uh, at the end uh, the elevation will be uh, 119 uh, then uh, it will come to uh, 3.5 uh, elevation drop. Uh, if I say something uh, uh, some dimension of this structure uh, uh, at the press, uh, at the top level, uh, this is uh, 42 meter, 42.5 meters wide, and the spill has a 32 uh, wide section. Uh, this uh, via is uh, via height uh, via is having a height of uh, 18 meters. The, this structure has uh, designed for a uh, flood of uh, 1310 meter cubes per second uh, which is uh, 10,000 years return flood period. Uh, I think that is all about this. Uh, those are the mechanisms, uh, mechanical arrangement on top of the structure, the yellow one uh, which is a uh, hoist winding that will uh, operate mechanically uh, to lift the uh, lift those two gates to control the flow through them yeah the Thank you very much, Anand, Vanigadha Vendayavans, for the... Now, Manjula, we have uh, finished the dam site. Now it's time to take our members uh, underground. Let's have a look on the our underground tunnel sites. I hope all the members, you, are, uh, you found it interesting, the explanation given by our field engineers. Now, in this part, we will move underground. We will take you to the tunnels. We have two main edits, edits one and two. So we will walk through the two edits and, and enter the main tunnel. And you can see how the construction works are going on. Uh, Manjula, let's move. Yes. Let's connect to the... Yeah, let's move to edit one, right? Good morning. I am Rangana Dayawansa, uh, project engineer, civil works. We are now going to look at the uh, main tunnel structure. Before uh, going to explain the main tunnel structure, I will give a brief introduction where uh, this is located. So earlier we saw main dam. Now we are at the downstream of the main dam. In my right hand side, uh, the Muscalia River is going and uh, as
as we said earlier, there is another river, Kehelgamoya. Uh, that two rivers will merge and uh, Kalani River begins. So, uh, we are downstream of the dam. This is the tunnel portal. Tunnel. And I will explain later what is the tunnel portal and add it. This main tunnel law, we call it as headrace tunnel. It starts from the dam, actually in the main intake, we cannot see from that now here, uh, it is upstream of the dam. And that uh, tunnel comes and uh, going to the uh, powerhouse site downstream 3.4 kilometers. Uh, this is uh, when we constructing tunnels, uh, normally there are a few accesses to the tunnel. In this tunnel, uh, there are two accesses. This is access number one, and uh, in the powerhouse side, there is another access. This access are called edits because uh, we, uh, in order to work in the tunnels, uh, there are uh, there should be an easy path to access. So one edit is this. Uh, I will explain further. We will move. Uh, come with you. Number one, in normal, uh, I will explain the further details, and I will generally speak about the tunnel constructions first. Uh, before constructing a tunnel, uh, comprehensive study should be done in the geological and geographical conditions, and uh, we will finalize the route. So, in this broadland hydropower projects is in the C B generation plans uh, around 30-40 years back and uh, several studies have been done and they have finalized three feasible routes from this Polpitia uh, area to Alukot and uh, we are near the Kitungala power station is located. Uh, so finally there were uh, two routes uh, namely A and B so we offered the construct, uh, contract in uh, 2008 so Chinese uh, selected one route and uh, start, they again did uh, study so they finalized the route uh, and they located this uh, edit here uh, and uh, they first after coming to the site they prepared this access road. So we will go inside to the tunnel uh, portal uh, via the edit and we will move to the uh, tunnel inside and get more details. Before entering the site, we should have proper uh, safety uh, aspects, so especially helmets, uh, gum boots, uh, like that, and proper light, light also should have. Uh, today, some but uh, uh, more, uh, smoke is there because some uh, concrete is going on. You can see the truck there, uh, and I will explain the. Uh, regarding the edit. So, uh, after generally, I will uh, again tell the tunnel construction words. After coming to the site, uh, contractor uh, select the most uh, easy access as edit. So, this is edit number one. Uh, and uh, they stabilize uh, this uh, entrance. Entrance is stabilized because if it is a good rock, they can just drill and blast and go. But it's a poor soil, they have to strengthen the portal. Uh, you can see there are still ribs and uh, spread concrete is there. And uh, for the excavation, they have used uh, primitive drilling and blasting method 
nowadays there are some advanced technologies like TBMs but uh, it is not viable to the tunnels which are uh, lesser than, less than 10 kilometers so Chinese have uh, used uh, this drilling and blasting methods but their construction is very uh, advanced that means their workmanship is very good you can see uh, that we say that half barrels what are the drill patterns is still in the rock can there is a smooth uh, excavation is there uh, please be careful because some slippery ground is there so we have to adhere to the all safety conditions here uh, with lights and other things uh, otherwise there can be uh, safety accidents uh, we will move in tunnel during the excavation uh, time we use this uh, ventilation duct uh, to get the air now it has all because uh, tunnel have breakthrough and not much uh, ventilation problems now they have off that in addition uh, that bottom lines you see uh, one is uh, water supply and what is one is compressed air uh, so we will uh, go to the as i said this is not the main tunnel this is one edit uh, we go to the this is around 9 90 meter length we will go to the merging point and see the main tunnel there In addition to the in addition to the service lines I mentioned, there is a power supply lines also uh, to use the for the lighting and other uh, the machinery works. Uh, during excavation, uh, normally tun tunnel uh, insides are somewhat wet in this grounds because water is seeping from uh, upper area so we have to be careful uh, while walking inside the tunnel This is the place where Edit 1 and Main Tunnel merges. Uh, this is Edit 1. Uh, my left hand side is Main Dam side and this is uh, Powerhouse side. Uh, this is the C actual zero change. Tunnel starts here from the Main Dam and downstream is the Powerhouse. It is, uh, this tunnel is 3.4 km length. So we will see now upstream side. Uh, now some part has already been concrete lined uh, and uh, this part of course in the edit and uh, tunnel junction uh, is uh, lined uh, finally so there is a plug to close this edit after completing the tunnel lining works we will move forwards after the main uh, intake gate uh, we can see the main intake gate we will walk and discuss this uh, about further things. From this uh, 3.4 kilometer length, around 1 kilometer is reinforced line concrete. Uh, in only uh, poor ground conditions uh, are lined and other uh, good rocks are not lined, only inward concrete and straight concrete uh, support is, uh, support will be used. Uh, you can see uh, after lining also there are some uh, water leakages 
आ गया बट फाइनली दे आर आर प्रोविशन टू बैकफिल डाउट दिस कॉन्क्रीट गैप दे आर आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ डाउटिंग बैकफिल डाउटिंग एंड कॉन्सोलिडेशन डाउट Uh, we will go towards the main intake gate and uh, see for the details. Mm. Main uh, intake is the place where water is get into the headrest tunnel. It has two gates: bulkhead gate and uh, control gate. At the moment, uh, until commissioning now, bulkhead gate has closed, and we can see the other slot. Uh, after commissioning, control gate will be function. <laughs> Now we will move downwards towards the power house and uh, discuss further details about uh, tunnel lining process and uh, other details. We are going now towards the power house side uh, along the tunnel. After starting the construction from the edit one side, contractor could not advance more length in the tunnel because uh, bad ground condition were was encountered. Uh, actually, in the initial uh, studies, uh, they, the several st study reports shows that there is a cast feature or li li uh, limestone feature in this area. But uh, contractor decided to get this uh, route. The, he is confident to uh, advance this area, but he could not advance uh, for the length. Uh, around uh, chain age 130, uh, there was a ground subsidence uh, uh, due to cast features or limestone cavities uh, in this tunnel. So, uh, after advancing this area, uh, there was a sudden uh, gust of water and mud uh, at that time and uh, stopped construction for some time. Later, contractor tried with some grouting and uh, supporting methods to advance, but uh, he failed to uh, follow this route. Then, uh, contractor decided to divert this path uh, away from the river and go into the mountain and uh, divert again to the uh, original route. That's why there is a abandoned part of the tunnel. And this is the new route and uh, they could proceed without much uh, troubles in this uh, new route. So, we are now following the uh, new tunnel route. Uh, this is the line section of new tunnel route. Okay, we earlier discussed about the excavation process of the tunnel. Now, we are going to look at the uh, lining process of the tunnel. Uh, this tunnel is 3.4 kilometer length tunnel. All of the sections are not lined uh, with reinforced concrete. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, there are five types of uh, rock conditions are there. Type 2, 3, 1, 3, 2, 4 and 5. Uh, 3, 2, 4, 5 sections are given this kind of reinforcement lining. And other uh, two types are uh, given uh, sprayed concrete with base lining. Uh, I will explain from the beginning how this uh, lining concrete is carried out. First, uh, in a particular chain age, we check the center line first. We check the first center line and the base elevation also. Then according to the type, we select the thickness of the base and wall and uh, reinforcement is fabricated accordingly. Uh, this is a type 4 section. Uh, it, that's its width is 500 millimeter uh, thickness. 
you have 20 centimeter uh, 20 millimeter diameter main reinforcement and uh, distribution bars uh, here uh, I have to mention especially uh, they have used cover blocks here and uh, yeah while fabricating the reinforcement and in addition to uh, there is a water bar uh, rubber uh, water bar here uh, it, to separate uh, concrete joints in order to avoid a leakage of uh, leakage of water uh, this tunnel is uh, horseshoe shaped tunnel uh, but it is not uh, fully horseshoe shaped the bottom is flat to transport vehicle and other uh, constructing easiness we say uh, we refer to as this modified horseshoe shaped tunnel uh, first base C base is carried out with these two haunches then uh, the, there is uh, two uh, specially designed uh, movable shutters are there 12 meter length we move the shutter to this place and fix to this uh, already cast base then uh, lining concrete is carried out uh, with the pumps I will show uh, later after moving the uh, shutter detail and concrete we earlier visited the uh, reinforcement fabrication of the uh, tunnel lining process now we are going to see more, uh, one of the important element of tunnel lining this is the tunnel shutter contractor has fabricated designed and fabricated two this kind of uh, shutters this is 12 meter in length uh, this is specially designed for this tunnel lining uh, 6.4 meter in diameter this is first assembled in the uh, intake area uh, where we visited this morning uh, added one area and uh, this can move along this rail tracks and motorable uh, provisions are there now uh, this has dismantled until it is uh, going to the other place uh, there are special things uh, I will explain to you uh, regarding this uh, form work uh, the first thing is uh, this uh, movable uh, quality of this shutter with the motors it can move uh, next thing uh, there are uh, while casting the concrete first concrete is cast from these sides there are openings for uh, to fill the uh, concrete uh, you are watching these that openings mm -hmm. uh, before that i want to explain that uh, uh, after moving the shutter to the uh, one position this shutter can hydraulically fix extend uh, to suit the uh, our required uh, lining section uh, and uh, after that uh, jacks, are, jacks and supports are provided uh, to fix in the position in addition uh, bottom parts vibration can be done from these openings but upper part you can see there are shutter vibrators uh, are fixed in uh, several locations to uh, provide vibration this is the uh, overall thing about the shutter vibrator uh, this two shutter vibrators are there alternatively they are shifting to the next location and concrete is carried out next we will go to the uh, concrete section uh, we can see there are concrete is going on from the other end of the shutter we will move to the left side 
Yeah, yes, uh, I think we just completed the upstream part of the tunnel. Uh, Manjul, now, before we move to the downstream part, shall we take a small break? Yes, Dr. Laksri, uh, it is, I think, our engineers and experts uh, clearly measure, explain uh, many areas of the project. Now, we will have, a, I think, three minutes short break. Uh, Dr. Laksri, in, in this break, uh, we have arranged a short uh, video, actually, a part of a very world-famous film, the film called uh, Bridge on the Rivers, River Koya. Uh, the originality of this film is from Thailand. Uh, we'll have to look at this, uh, this part of this uh, uh, short, short this film, and there is significance of this uh, film. You will see uh, later. We'll have a look.
Yeah, yes, uh, I think we have just finished the intermission now. Thank you very much. Uh, this is Engineer Krishan's idea. Excellent <laughs> work. <laughs> Manjula, what next now? I think we have finished the half of the program. What next? I think we can move to the downstream part of the main tunnel. Yeah, yeah I think uh, we can connect to the engineers there and the downstream uh, part of the tunnel. So there we will visit the, we will enter from the edit two, the second edit of the main tunnel. And there you can see the bottom of the search chamber, 10 stocks. And then we can walk through the, up to the search chamber. And then you, you will see the top of the search chamber from the outside. Yeah, Manjula, shall we connect to the engineers there? I think engineer Manjula. Manjula Sampat. Good morning. Welcome to Broadland Hydropower Project R2, all of you. Now we are exactly entrance of the main, uh, added to entrance to the main tunnel. So we have main two important structure inside the tunnel, main namely penstock and search tank. So I think you have much experience about the, uh, we have followed the safety procedure in our side. So before entering the entering the site, we have to follow our and uh, follow our safety procedure what we introduced to the site. So I think it's time to go in, inside the tunnel. Please follow me. So when we enter to the tunnel, we just see what what we inside of the tunnel and uh, some uh, water spots are there. So before the we must see about the, around the side. Please follow me. <coughs> Be careful water coming through the tunnel and be careful and to the tunnel some water spots are there. I just entered the main tunnel from the addict to access tunnel. This is the upstream of the main tunnel and this is the downstream of the main, tu main tunnel. Now we are from 3,000 3, meters away from the main intake structure. So if we, we can go to the their downstream, we can find our exact our structure they are down, means uh, penstock and search tank. Just follow me. where Penstock and search tank connection position. So we in our project, Borden Hydro project, we construct impedance type uh, search tank as, as constructed in New Canyon and Victoria project also. So I think uh, before, before explaining about the search tank, we can move to the Penstock and I will explain about the Penstock also.
This is the pen stock. Pen stock is a normally large pipe which led some with some soap which carries water from the tunnel or inside the structure to the turbines. Sometimes MIV valve will cross, then water hammer will effect from the pen stock. So we have to design, we have to consider, we have to consider the gas pressure before the design of the pen stock. Uh, Actually, here we in our Broadland hydropower project, we use embedded type pen stock here. The pen stock length is 152 meter from here. Uh, so, another important parameter is what we use the material for the construction of the pen stock. The, uh, the material of the uh, pen stock is uh, Q345C. That, that is a uh, uh, that is the alloy material, alloy steel material. So you can see there is some web. Every 300 meter we develop some web because we need to take that stiffness of the pressure steel. We provide that web. Now you can see they are down. We are preparing for the backfilling concrete. It's still not completed that area. Normally we are doing 15 meters to 20 meters section for the backfill in concrete. We use get 25 or 20 concrete for the backfill in purposes. When we do the con backfill in concrete, sometimes the crown area will not properly fill. So we have to gout that area because there has a lot of big pressure developed sometimes because of the water hammer. So we keep, you can see that hole. You can see that hole. This is the gout in hole. You can see this hole. We apply pressure gout there and ensure, we can, then we can ensure the, all the area filled with the concrete or oh, concrete gout. of the penstock line. Actually, now we are, we are going to enter to the qualification part of the penstock line. So, this is the qualification part of the penstock. So, uh, we design, we type, we shape of the qualification, especially designed for the Kodawa Broadland Hydropower Project. Because we have, from water come to the intake to the powerhouse, there will be some head losses. We need to minimize the head losses. So we introduce the V-shape of modification for our project. This is the sickle plate. This is an important part of the modification. There are, there are two important, important points to introduce this sickle plate. Uh, you can see in our powerhouse we have two generate two turbines. So we need to give the water equal for the both sides. So we introduce the two branch pipes, two two branch pipe for that. So so this is the one divide the water equally to the two branch pipe. Another important parameter is. We need to minimize the damage of this area. So water, then water time tap to direct into this area because of, because of this sickle plate. And this is the one branch pipe. We use, as I mentioned earlier, we use same material for this one also. Uh, Q345C material, still yellow material. Thickness also 16 millimeter. The diameter of the branch pipe is 3.3 .3 meter and the length of the branch pipe 41 meter. Now you can see some uh, welding joint, welding joint here. You see welding joint here. So here, before we 
backfill in the concrete, we need to check that whether welding is okay or not. We need to check that there will be a, sometimes there will be a leak, water leakage. So we need to check that and ensure that. that. So we did water pressure for this, for this, only for this bifurcation part. So the design pressure of the bifurcation part is 0.91 megapascal. So we apply 1.5 by design pressure, that's mean 1.4 megapascal as well apply for the testing pressure. So actually all the tests is passed, we are, we are lucky, then we need to, we have, then we come from, there are no any leakages from the building. Another thing is, uh, even you can see some corrosion there. You can see some corrosion. So we need to protect this corrosion. We need to protect this surface. So we apply the coat of the paint. One is primary and two other another coat of paint to the total thickness of the 400 microns. Another thing is we are doing the, some. Uh, Test for the welding. Uh, on it, normally, normally we are doing every welding rings ultrasonic test and 10% radiography test. And another special test we are doing here, TOFD test for here for the welding. This is Mr. Sumanavira, Senior Mechanical Superintendent. He will explain the, about the test with what we do here. Welcome to this place. Uh, firstly, you take care about yourself. I will explain this play, this drawing. Uh, now you saw this huge pipe, 4.6 meter single pipe, brought water to this place. And from here, this bifurcation joint divides this into two floors. Which one is 2.8 meter diameter each? And water flows 35 cubic to the hydro turbine. And we have tested this uh, five joints from stock. Uh, we use ultrasonic testing devices and also radiography testing each of these joints for the ensure the safety of this hydro plant. And now uh, it's different from this bifurcation. Water flow is improved to 6 meters per second. Uh, and pressure is dropped a little bit because of this huge joint. Now you can see uh, how this branch pipe leads to mega MIV when in the plant. And uh, we, you can see uh, the welding works. We have progress propagating. And you all will have to be careful with yourself. This is the place where we are going to join this bifurcation pipe to the main inlet well, which leads to water to the turbine. Now we have uh, prepared the V groove. Before weld this joint, we have to prepare a V groove to properly weld this joint. We use bag welding device for the welding well. Now, after welding works, we have to test this joint also to ensure the no defects, defects and any other flaws. So we use ultrasonic testing devices to check the welding and also radiography welding test device also we have to stick to that. In addition, uh, bipolitan test also carried out to ensure the any other defects on this welding choice. Uh, I think uh, this is a very critical place because of this is the main inlet trail which cut out the flow and on this water to the turbine. I think uh, thank you very much. Uh, this is a
All right, now we are at the search chamber. This is another very important structure when we are doing the hydro power project. Uh, previously, I also said this is the uh, impedance type phase stock uh, search chamber. So, what is the purpose of the search chamber? When we need to, sometimes we need to close the powerhouse MIV valve suddenly. Then, with water hammer will occur on the pan stock. Then, we need to that pressure release someplace. That's why we introduced this kind of search chamber. Uh, as sometimes you know, uh, some people we you know the this kind of penstock uh, search chamber introduced to the Canyon project and also Victoria, but I mean impedance type search chamber. So if you follow me, we can go and see the where we did there. can give the just parameters of the search chamber. The total height of search chamber 61 meters and there's a two diameters are there. Top diameter is 16 meters and bottom diameter is 8 meters. The, the search chamber just gives, goes connect to the dead down in to the pen stop. And thickness of the wall is varies from one uh, 1.5 meter to 1 meter and we use the 25 uh, grade concrete for this structure and also uh, and also we use uh, 25 diameter millimeter uh, millimeter frame for the structure um, another very important thing we did in, in especially in for our project uh, for the firefighting facilities at the powerhouse Previously, we designed to construct the separate tank for there, but we changed the design and we attach, uh, build up the fire pole attached to the search chamber. Uh, got into our calculation, this is uh, 240 cubic meter for the, all the uh, purpose of the fire facility at the powerhouse. Uh, I think we can clearly see, go to the up, the search chamber. There's another important structure they have. So please follow me. top of the search chamber. Uh, we talk of the elevation, 133 above the mean sea level. You, are now. So you can see the search chamber diameter now. As previously I said, this is uh, 16 meter. This 16 meter diameter really goes down to up to 94 elevation. Again, diameter change 16 to 80 meter from the 94 elevation to 72 elevation. That that time, uh, that hole connect to the directly connect to the pen stop. Um, so you can see this structure. This is the gauge hoisting structure. If you want to any uh, repair work there, uh, down pen stock, we can just close the pen stock by using this gate. We can do any repair there. And uh, other important factor is we we introduce some man hole here. So if you want to go to their down, we can use this fan hall. Uh, as well as this fan hall act as the ventilation pipe to the uh, down. Uh, so uh, still we need, we need 
complete complete this part you can see this there's a gate rail grooves we can choose different different uh, concrete grade for this one and we have to complete that uh, other than uh, presently progress uh, we are when we talking about the present progress of the uh, search plan search plan we have we complete 75 percent up to now uh, i think that it is enough about the uh, search chamber then we can go to the they are done another very important structures there is uh, called uh, tail race we can go there now follow me yes uh, i think uh, thank you uh uh, Sampath and Sumanavira for the very nice explanation. I think our members could get a very good idea about the whole waterway. Manjula, now uh, on our tour in this project, uh, now we have almost come along the waterway up to the main inlet trail. We are just behind the powerhouse walls, upstream walls. So it's right time to enter the powerhouse. I think. Let me connect you to the powerhouse site where I have my project engineer, project manager, Taranga. Vikramaradhana, she will uh, explain you about the powerhouse and uh, also engineer Anurad Mudanaka will join her. There you will listen, you can uh, inspect the powerhouse uh, structure, then the powerhouse equipment installation and we will uh, we'll take you to the powerhouse uh, uh, the generator flow, turbine flow and we'll take you to the bottom most level there and, we, and there you can see how the equipment installations are going on. Uh, Manjula, shall we connect her to the line now yes welcome you all to our broadlands uh, power plant site i'm taranga vikramaradhana uh, project manager broadlands hydro power project uh, from here you can uh, have a good view of our powerhouse site uh, that that building over there is our powerhouse so the that uh, this is uh, Kenli Ganga flowing towards downwards. This is the up, upstream, and this is the downstream side. So that structure, which is under construction, is our tail race. Uh, tail race means that uh, that we release that uh, used water uh, to the Kenli Kenli River back. So that uh, you can see there are three tall pillars. Uh, that is our uh, one of our bridge which uh, connects this uh, road to the uh, villages over there. So uh, behind our powerhouse building, uh, we that uh, our switchyard is uh, there. So that uh, switchyard converts that generated 11 kV uh, voltage to the 132 uh, kV voltage. Uh, from uh, after the conversion, we uh, transmit that power to that um, uh, to the national grid by a small uh, 200 meter transmission line, 132 transmission line, and it connects to that uh, transmission tower as a single in, uh, in and out connection. So, among those uh, trees, you can see a uh, uh, structure. Uh, it is our search chamber. Uh, I think you have already you know, uh, visited uh, to that structure uh, through the tunnel. So now we will move to our powerhouse side. Uh, this is way to our powerhouse. Uh, this area is called Alukahutan. So the Academy awarded film, uh, world famous film uh, that did on the river Kwai was filmed uh, in this area. Uh, we, we can still found old uh, bridge foundation uh, 100 meters away from here. So that uh, memory of that uh, film still considered uh, very valuable and uh, some tourists still coming, uh, visiting to see the location. So that this is our newly constructed bridge and uh, to, to transport our machinery to the powerhouse. Uh, we have planned uh, to give the appearance, out appearance uh, similar to that old uh, bridge on the river Kwai that uh, we will do it in a later part of our project. 
and uh, here you can see that uh, Kelly River, uh, very uh, rapid uh, water flow. As you know that uh, this Kelly River is famous for the white water around it, and uh, this is good uh, water rapid for the sportsman. So we will uh, move to the powerhouse side. Roadless powerhouse is a semi underground structure. That means uh, some levels are underground and some levels are on the ground. So that uh, the length of the powerhouse is uh, around uh, 41 meters, width is 32 meters, and the height is uh, nearly 33 meters. So let's move inside the powerhouse. But uh, beware, you have to wear a helmet and the safety shoes for your personal safety. Let's enter to the powerhouse. We have pasted some drawings uh, over there for our day to day references. I will use them to explain the structure of the uh, powerhouse. Let's go there. So that uh, you can see that uh, bottom level, uh, that 41.1 uh, is the drainage level, and uh, next level is 44.0, uh, uh, that is a uh, draft tube level. The draft tube, here you can see the draft tube. The draft, the draft tube is used to release the water, uh, that uh, used water, that energy extracted water to the Helena River. That, uh, Helen River. So the next level is uh, 48.3 that is MIV and turbine level. Uh, this is MIV. Uh, MIV is main inlet valve. Uh, it, uh, it used to control the water flow uh, whenever necessary. It, may, uh, it can be the emergency situation or the maintenance situation. And uh, this is a uh, spiral casing. So that Spiral casing means that it directs the water flow to the turbine. So, middle you can see the turbine. So, in broad lens that uh, we use Francis type uh, turbines. Uh, the capacity of 18.5 uh, megawatt. And the rated flow is 35 uh, cubic meters per second. And uh, rated head is 56.9 meters. And that uh, rated rot uh, speed, rotating speed is 300 rpm. So that uh, we have two turbines. We have already uh, the two turbines are already at the site, but uh, not yet installed. But uh, in the site, you can uh, see that uh, we have already installed the spiral casing, and uh, installation of the MIV is in progress. You can uh, visit there today and. Uh, so the next level is uh, 54.2 is the turbine pit uh, level that uh, in that level we have a uh, turbine uh, door for, to enter the turbine pit so we can use that door in a uh, installation period and as well as the maintenance period further that uh, we have some auxiliary uh, auxiliary systems like uh, water filter systems uh, also in this level. The next level is uh, 60.1 it is the operational level and uh, we can, uh, we can uh, find uh, several auxiliary system like governor and the uh, oil tank system, oil treatment system and the workshop are in this level. So the next level is uh, 62.5 it is uh, cable cable wallet, cable room and uh, the next level is 66 level. 66 level means election day level where we can find our HVAC cubicle room and the main control room as well as uh, several auxiliary systems like uh, diesel generator room, communication room, uh, uh, battery, uh, battery room, 
uh, we have several auxiliary systems in this level. So now we are standing uh, at the erection bed uh, in this level. So in uh, 74.7, we, you can see the powerhouse frame. Here you can see physically. Now already we have installed our powerhouse frame. So there you can see that two points main hoist and the auxiliary hoist. Main hoist capacity is 80 tons and the auxiliary, uh, auxiliary hoist capacity is uh, 20 tons. So uh, now we, using, we are using this crane uh, for our installation. Later we will use for this crane uh, for the maintenance and uh, moving heavy equipment. So now uh, we move to the uh, rotor installation side. This is proto-magnetic globe. Uh, because of this uh, shape, uh, we call it as spider tool. Then uh, we have kept this uh, magnetic rotor magnetic globe uh, on a specially built concrete pillar vertically and uh, do the installation. So here we have uh, installed 1,280 uh, lamination sheets in a special special arrangement. So after the uh, installation that our staff that uh, contractor consultant and cb staff do some measurement uh, to check whether uh, to, to check oh, whether that uh, measurements are within the tolerances that is what we do here so this arrangement is to uh, check the roundness of the rotor so other than the rotor roundness uh, we, we we take that uh, measurement of the diameter and the uh, waviness of the rotor surface. So if the measurements are okay, uh, that means measurements are within the design tolerances, then we can install the rotor poles. So we have uh, 20 number of rotor poles for uh, one machine. So this goes is to install the rotor poles. So road lens uh, generator is a salient type synchronous generator. So if I explain a little bit about the generator working principle, so that uh, normally that generator converts that uh, mechanical energy which came from the prime mover to a electrical energy. For that, uh, we need to power uh, after that, after we power this uh, rotor with the DC voltage, uh, assume that uh, that prime mover rotates this rotor. That whole rotor that uh, then, uh, it uh, creates the rotating uh, flux. That uh, rotating flux induces the voltage uh, uh, inside the stator coil. So for this uh, unit one, we have already installed the stator winding in the generator pin. You can uh, uh, see that uh, it is over there. You can see that uh, we have already installed the stator winding for the unit one. So you can see that we have two machines. Uh, each machine uh, capacity is 17.5 megawatt. Uh, so to all together, that our powerhouse uh, capacity is 35 megawatt. So that uh, since these are the hydro machines, that uh, that uh, rated speed is low. For these machines, that uh, rated speed is. 300 rpm and uh, generated voltage is 11 kV. So 
that uh, I will hand over to the Mr. Anurad to explain the uh, parts uh, which I have installed by now. Over to you, Mr. Anurad. Thank you, Engineer Taranga. Uh, welcome you all. Uh, my name is Amrad Mudan Naik, Project Engineer Electrical. Uh, actually, you know that uh, we have several floors in this uh, power station. Now we are on the loading bay or the erection bay. We have several floors inside. So we will go inside the power station and see what are the equipment installed there. Please follow me. the rear part of the power station in front of me is the switch yard so we are now going inside the power station to see the inside arrangement so please follow me now we are entering to a construction area so this safety should be the first so uh, please be careful about the height, the slippery areas, the conductors, uh, you have to be very keen on those things. And also it is very important to uh, equip with you with PPEs, protective equipment. We are on the skater floor. Please come with me. You can see the unit 1 uh, rotor is placed on the erection bay and also the EOT frame. Please come. Be careful. This is uh, unit 2 generator piece. It is uh, only the uh, civil loads are completed. And we are moving to unit 1. Here you can see unit 1, you have the stator. The stator is placed there. Actually, uh, we got the stator with two parts. And uh, you can see the joint there. Uh, after that, assembly, we completed the winding insertion work and do the testing. So, rated capacity of this generator is uh, 17.5 megawatt and 50 hertz, 0.5 power factor lagging. The synchronous speed of the generator is 300 rpm and therefore we have 20 poles. The connection method is 5 star, the winding connection method. Uh, the su supply output of the generator is 11 kV and the uh, ampere is 1148. The excitation level uh, we are given to the state uh, rotor is through the static SCR. Uh, the supply voltage for the excitation is uh, 198 volts and the ampere age is around 553. Actually, from here on all, I will uh, hand over to engineer Nuan uh, who will detail you and you can uh, get a closer view of this stator. Okay, as engineer Amdal said, this state I have to cite as a two pieces. Then we combine both pieces together at the site. So here you can see the different color, red color and gray color. That gray color areas windings were inserted at the site. So uh, mega test and insulation test were done at the site, uh, especially before the insert that uh, winding to insert that slots and after insert to that slot. Uh, so for mega test we applied 2500 
DC voltage for one minute and for insulation test we applied uh, 32.75 kV for 15 seconds and uh, one, uh, one minute. So this insulation grade this FF, uh, the, the, the next stage is we need to connect the windings together. Uh, this, uh, uh, this all this data uh, has a uh, have uh, 2,210 uh, two, uh, two um, windings. So uh, this is a three phase generator. So each phase has uh, uh, 12 uh, temperature sensors also. So then all together there is a 36 temperature sensor. The temperature sensors also included this state. That's the current situation of this state. And now, when it's as an next step, we need to connect all the windings together. And there is a two holes you can you can't see it in this position. Uh, there is a two holes. One hole for the uh, neural grounding, another one for the to take out uh, output to first state. That's the current situation of the this. Uh, state and now we came down from the exciter flow now we are in generator flow so shall we proceed we carefully did the both 13 conductors And also keep, keep in mind the clearance here and also scaffolding, sharp edges, wires, the construction site will have these kind of obstacles everywhere. This is, this is generated through power supply. Inside is the lead. This is called generator one house. Additionally, you have you can see uh, generator 1 MIV well. This uh, MIV well is a butterfly type MIV well. We will proceed to the other side. Unit 1, Unit 2. This uh, unit MIV well basically you have three components. The middle part is the well body. There you have the upstream side, it is connected to the bifurcation. Uh, the downstream side it is connected to the spiral casing. Additionally, you can see here the under construction you have uh, the hoisting mechanism with counterweight with hydraulic support. So more details about this one and the operating uh, mechanism will explain you by engineer Supri. We have two main inlet wells in Broadlands Hydropower Plant. This is the Unit 2 MIV. The main purpose of the MIV is to turn on and turn off the water flow whenever it is necessary. This is a hydraulic activated butterfly well with a counter. The main, main inlet well is consisting with the upstream plant, the well body, the loose plant, and the downstream plant. The well body is consistent consist with a maintenance seal, a service seal, and a disc to turn on and turn off the water flow. The water flow rate through the MIV is 34.7 cubic meters per second. The diameter of MIV is 2.8 meters. Now we can get into the spiral case entering from the manhole in the other side. Please follow me to get there. While going to the spiral case, I will show you the onion of MIV. There you can see the onion of MIV. And the hydraulic jack will get connected to the onion, and the other end of the jack will get connected to this spleen. At that end, you can see several bowls. There, the outer weight will be fixed. Now, you can get into the spiral case through this manhole from the top. Right. 
now we are inside the spiral case in my left hand side you can see the disc of the main inlet valve now it is in closed position now we are entering the spiral case be careful while you are following me here these are called guide gates they guide the water flow to enter the wicket gates inside the guide panes you can see the silver color gates are they are called wicket gates after that there is the turbine run now the wicket gates are in closed position the diameter of spiral case gradually decreases while going around the turbine here is the end of the spiral case you can see the end if you are coming carefully to this way I made a brief description about the spiral case and MIB. After that, mechanical engineer Kasun will describe about the turbine. We are ready to exit the test tube. Please follow me. And uh, the main thing, uh, this is uh, this is a called uh, turbine area, the turbine floor. Uh, this is a distributor. Uh, mainly distributor has uh, distributor is included uh, three pieces. Uh, those are uh, bottom ring. You can see the bottom. And other thing is we got gate. And this is a top cover. Top cover and bottom ring used for uh, to place the we got gate. There are 24 we uh, got gates here. And uh, mainly we got gate used uh, to control water flow which enter the uh, turbine. And uh, you can see some space here. This is space used for uh, turbine. Uh, when talk about the turbine, uh, in here we use a uh, Francis turbine. It has a uh, 17.5 megawatt. Uh, thank you. I like to invite Mr. Sampath uh, to talk about uh, railways. I think you have got more and good experience about the hydropower project, uh, project especially in the bridge the Gordon hydropower project. Now we are the tail race structure actually. The basic function of the tail race structure is uh, the primary function of the tail race structure is to maintain the minimum tail water elevation below the power plant and to draft with submergence. It is important to keep that draft tube submergence even when there is no flow in the downstream in order to improve turbine startup performance. Accordingly, we design the tail rest excavation immediately below the power house so that adequate water level, sorry, adequate water depth will be maintained. So now you can see. Uh, actually, there's a uh, gate chambers there. There's another two gates that are down in the water. We can see, we can see that. After generating the hydropower by turbines and turbines, the water released through the draft tube to the field base. Then water has some kinetic energy. Then we need to this kinetic energy minimize the deposit release to the, our natural flow. Actually, uh, our natural flow is Kalani River. So we uh, 
we structure this uh, we build this structure according to the uh, that energy dissipation type so we built you can see that two walls we call the guide walls and another structure we can see there we call that diaphragm wall actually primary uh, actually we, uh, the purpose of that uh, walls we need to give the good water part to the river and now we can go there and we can see clearly the connection between the tailways and our Kalani River, Kalani River. Okay, let's go. Now we are the uh, merging point of the uh, natural river, uh, river, river we call Kalani River, and our tailway. Uh, they get so so actually we need to dive from balls there yeah. the purpose of the discharge flow dive from balls we need to uh, throw the water to travel to our natural river so they, then uh, when we merge into the Kalani river there's no disturbance to the natural flow that's the, that's the main purpose of we build this dive ball to the parallel to the uh, Kalani River. Now you can see, they are, they are preparing the concrete, they are concreting now. Our, uh, our uh, present process is actually good now. Uh, I can't remember to tell the length of the our tail base structure is, it's about 353 levels, uh, 53 meters, and we maintain the slope is 0.2%. Uh, so, present progress is, it's about 70. 70%. Uh, so, but you can see there are another two uh, tiers are there, another one apartment and other one, another apartment is uh, building up. So that that is the, uh, we are planning to build the bridge to the this village people. Then you they can use this bridge, uh, bridge for their day-to-day -day purposes. Uh, Actually, that is the uh, basic and uh, proper situation of our trail structure. Uh, Mr. Anuradha will continue the further about our project details. This so far, we covered major construction areas of the Gordon Side Power Project. Uh, if I recall you, from the beginning, we covered the rear side, dam side, the trace tunnel, the chamber, the stock after the bifurcation, and then the powerhouse. When you go to the powerhouse area, you observe several floors. And thereafter, we uh, discuss about the tail race structure. So that is the end of uh, this session. So if you take the overall progress of this project, it is around 71%. It's a typical project. If you take uh, the commissioning date, expected commissioning date of the project, we expected to energize uh, Roadland's project first quarter 2021, the next year. Once the uh, energy generated, we will be connected to all Polpitier grid substation. So, before concluding this uh, session, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you all to professionals, engineering professionals, to uh, appreciate you appreciate you, and thankful to you for your uh, contribution and spending time with us. Thank you very much. Vene? Yeah. Uh, okay, thank you very much for all the engineers at site. I think uh, now we all uh, all of you could get a good uh, look on the whole project. I think we visited from the dam site to the power plant. 
and uh, we inspected the various uh, uh, the other item the electrical and mechanical aspects we have already covered uh, the, during the program so the, the, the I, I think it's already included so now i think we can move to the next item that is uh, q and a uh, before that i want to mention you that uh, you met uh, some of the engineers who worked there but we have a big team of senior engineers uh, behind this massive project and i will, we will mention about them as well in the later uh, the yeah, about the questions actually we got a large number of questions in the chat and uh, my engineers have already answered most of them so one um, commonly asked question is the white water rafting issue actually it was a very uh, serious issue in uh, social issue and this problem even in one time even the pressure was so high uh, to even to suspend the project but uh, we our team worked very hard we studied the problem and we gave a very 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 win win solution and with that uh, we could proceed with the works and uh, i think uh, we have, of, of all the problems we have received we have uh, answered the one question is in the house this silt is removed in the main dam actually this is a, if you look at the the dam spill gates are very low um, it's at a low level so in uh, this type of pond not like a major reservoir with the uh, during spilling times we can remove silt uh, and also it has been in a cascade uh, most of the uh, upper reservoirs catch silt there and from there also we uh, we can remove and uh, according to studies the, the silt input inflow is not significant yeah uh, any other questions you have uh, i think uh, yeah yes there's one more question uh, <laughs> uh, there's a request to manjula there's a request to conduct a project management and dispute resolution of the project uh, sorry uh, this is uh, project management and dispute resolution of project Ah, okay actually we have the consultant so far we have not uh, faced any serious disputes so we have been uh, working with the contractor uh, solving all the day to day problems and uh, but there's no no serious any disputes so to solve at the moment uh, then there's a question uh, how about groundwater leakage any social issues yes Uh, like in Umau, yeah, yes, <laughs> yeah. Normally, in a tunnel project, actually, it's a pro uh, common problem the uh, the groundwater uh, leaking. That is, uh, if you do not uh, apply correct techniques, uh, the groundwater can leak into the tunnels. But in this project, also in one st one stretch, we had very serious problem. But with uh, proper grouting techniques, we could uh, seal them. seal them off and uh, we did not face any serious problem because we, you might have heard in some projects the water table goes dry wells and the streams go dry and uh, then it causes a serious problem but here uh, we are lucky we faced uh, we, we could uh, ad address those uh, during construction without any serious problem uh, then uh, there's, there's a question about the uh, uh yeah sorry yeah yeah from uh, which one red one yeah uh, hmm. i there's a question about uh, show me uh yeah this about the protection the corrosion protection actually cathodic protection uh, technique is not used we in this waterways and other structures we use the anti corrosive paints and so this is not uh, applicable uh, in our works yeah then there's a question about uh, how about the joints casting vertically is it a single water bar or uh yeah is it a single water bar or the series of water bars actually we have water bars yeah both upstream and downstream yeah not a single water bar that is suits two sets uh then there's a question yeah silt i think we, we have already answered yes 
what are the solutions for the river bank protection river bank as uh, engineer vanik dev explained we are uh, applying short crete and uh, if necessary with the concrete protection walls yes which one then uh, we have question uh, how could you explain about method of blasting and types of situation yes yeah, the uh, general uh, yeah okay this answered the what is the lining yeah what well, lining thickness actually as engineer dayawans explained we have five cl classes of uh, rock the tunnel lining and there are uh, different classes we have different thicknesses according to the category yeah uh, then there's a question what is the type of tunnel boring machine used for there yeah as explained earlier in this project we were following the most primitive drill and blast method uh, no boring machines were used generally uh, in the sri in sri lanka we use a tunnel boring machine there is tbm for the first time in uh, umawaya project the basic rule is that uh, if it is less than the if the tunnel length is less than 10 km is not uh, viable so especially the in sri lanka drill and, drill and blast uh, technology is uh, very popular and we have skilled people and uh, it's the cheaper so we adopted that adopted the drill and blast and you must have noticed in the excavated tunnel profiles uh, the we have got the shape exactly uh, to the design shape yeah then there's another question that we have large number of questions i have to thank my team uh, they have already uh, thank uh, replied all of them and only few are remaining so it's, it's easy for my work is this reinforcement concrete lining what retaining element uh, i mean it, is it designed as a uh, this question is not very clear clear yes it's a structural as well as water retaining element uh -huh. yeah this answered already uh, mm. yeah yes uh, sorry in the pentai project any accident no uh, <laughs> yes i think uh, one senior engineer also mentioned i think uh, you all know with the uh, i do not want to mention the the country names but <laughs> the safety standards we have issues uh, and we, our team uh had to struggle but uh, touch wood so far we have been maintaining a very good record and there were very few small accidents but uh, we are doing our best yeah yeah yes i think uh, we are coming to the end of our allocated time slot and thank you very much for Uh, all the members who joined us and we are very happy that this is the first event uh, we conduct of this nature and we have i have to thank all my team and worked very hard and all this all our members inputs and uh, i think it i hope all of you enjoyed it and found it uh, useful uh, may i now ask manjula do you have anything before yes, we conclude yes Yes, uh, Engineer Dr. Kabalaksi, thank you very much, the project director of the Rodent Hydropower Project, and uh, thank you very much your uh, your leadership and your team for having this much of exciting uh, virtual field visit to Rodent Power Project. Uh, before winding up, I would like to propose vote of thanks. I have mentioned your names individually and uh, commonly, and la ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, we thank. especially the institution of engineers sri lanka the apex uh, body of the engineers sri lanka and special civil engineers sectional committee at the water forum of the institute of engineers sri lanka uh, secretary staff which specially mention uh, chamara the it manager and the chamira publicity manager and special thanks goes to engineer krishan patirana from the beginning for giving a wonderful support for this uh, program and this uh, virtual visit and uh, i have to mention in addition to the uh, expert expertise engineers of this project project few names i had to specially mention consultant tunnel engineer mr atukorale consultant team leader mr gunavadana senior electrical engineer mr asankapera senior mechanical engineer mr kanathwat senior civil engineer Mr. Ganesh and senior civil engineer, Mr. Suresh, under the leadership of uh, project director, engineer Dr. Kamal Lakshiri. And uh, Dr. Kamal, I think uh, we received few uh, requests to have 
uh, project management side and the dispute resolution side. Not only this, this project is commonly, I, I saw some uh, chat uh, messages in the chat, chat box. I think we can have another session because this is a separate area, then it is a broad area. So we can have another session very soon. Uh, we will arrange from the civil engineer section of committee. And I think you also have good experiences over the last 26 years of this project management. So I think you and your experts can join with this uh, uh, awareness session in project management in future. We will definitely will have uh, this kind of session in coming zone. And with this, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we'll uh, come to the end of virtual visit and program. And we'll uh, meet with another, this kind of exciting event in future. And thank you very much for joining all and uh, all the support given to us. Thank you very much. We'll meet again. Thank you.